I want to share a personal story which I usually keep to myself. My cousin, in fact, a sister, Florence, worked for the United Nations Development Program in Rwanda for more than 15 years. After the genocide started, she was trapped in her house near the Camp Kigali, Army Barracks, with her niece and other children and neighbors, around a dozen people in total. The telephone in Francis' house still worked, and I called her several times using my satellite phone. Each time we spoke, she was more desperate. But her forces could not reach the area. When the command of the UN peacekeeping mission General Dariel visited me where I was in Mulindi. I asked him to rescue Florence. He said he would try. The last time I talked to her, I asked her if anyone had come. She said no, and started crying. Then she said, Paul, you should stop trying to save us. We don't want to live anymore anyway. I quickly understood what she was saying. And she hung up. At that time, I had a very strong heart, but it weakened a bit because I understood what she was trying to tell me. On the, May, on the morning of May 16th, following a month of torture, they were all killed, except for one niece who managed to escape and thanks to a good neighbor. It later emerged that uh, a Rwandan working at the UNDP betrayed his Tutsi colleagues to the killers. Witnesses remember him celebrating that, celebrating Florence's murder the night after the attack. He continued his career with the United Nations for many years, even after evidence implicating him emerged. He is still a free man, now living in France.
I asked General Darer what happened. He said that his soldiers encountered a militia roadblock near the house. And so they turned back just like that. Meanwhile, he conveyed to me an order from the United States Ambassador to protect diplomats and foreign, civili uh, and foreign civilians evacuating from or by road to Burundi from attack by the militias. These two things happened at the same time. I do not need to be instructed to do something that goes without saying. That's what I was going to do. But the militias ran away, or, or, or rather peacekeepers ran away from militias were manning a roadblock. Um, I do not blame General Darrell. He's a good man who did the best that could be done in the worst conditions imaginable. And who has consistently borne witness to the truth, despite the personal cost. Nevertheless, in the contrast between the two cases, I took note of the value that is attached to different shades of life. Thanks for watching this video. As President Kagame poignantly recounts the tragic loss of his cousin Florence in the horrors of the 1994 genocide, we're reminded of the countless lives shattered by that dark chapter in Rwanda's history. Yet, in the midst of immense sorrow, there's also a message of resilience and hope. Through the retelling of Florence's story, we honor her memory and the memories of all those who perished but we also acknowledge the strength of the Rwandan people who have worked tirelessly to rebuild their nation and foster reconciliation. As we move forward, let us carry the lessons of the past with us, striving for a future where such atrocities are never repeated. May Florence's spirit inspire us to build a world of peace, understanding, and compassion.